Welcome to Hey Therapist. I'm your host, Leslie Ross. With me is my producer, Jay Wesley Lindley. Let's get mental. Check, check one, two. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I'm good, too. I'm ready to rock. Check, check. All right. Welcome back to Hey Therapist. Today is a day that I have no prep. <gasps> so nothing. I'm going to make Jay talk. My producer, Jay Wesley Lindley. Hello, hello. Who is sitting off camera. He's over there. I'm the... Uh, to keep the mystery. Yeah, the mysterious <laughs> producer. I like that. I like that too. So what are we going to talk about? Oh, wow. Uh, we've been talking a lot about relationships recently. Yeah. How about if I uh, go over a couple of questions that I thought during your monologues, <laughs> but never got a chance to ask them for whatever reason, it, you know, sure. moved on to something else. And so it didn't seem appropriate at the time. One of them, you did a lot of talking about men expecting sex uh-huh. and things of that nature. My question was during that podcast, it kind of felt like there was no good time for a man to ask for sex or more importantly, there a man could never expect sex from his partner. Is that true, or did I just kind of read a little read that wrong? One thing I think it's both genders. They're, I'm sorry, they're, I speak for me. Sure, so, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, a lot of people do think of the partner wanting sex as the man. A lot of times, that is the generic go to is that it's always the man. But sometimes it is the woman. Trust me, I know. Ooh. I think there is an expectation of sex in a relationship if that is what is part of your relationship because there are sexless relationships True. and everybody in that relationship is fine with that. And if you like it, I love it. It makes you happy, makes you happy. Um, but I think when you're expecting something and when you're doing things to be rewarded, I think is when we start talking more about these love languages. Cause a lot of times, and just relationships in general, because a lot of times people do things to get something. So if you're doing something to get sex, If you're like, oh, I'm going to do this because I know she loves it, so she'll put out tonight or he'll put out tonight or whatever it is, you're doing it for the wrong reasons and they know that. You may be just only doing that. Like they may have already sussed you out and know your pattern is, oh, they came home early and did the dishes. That means they're going to try to get it in later. Because it's not like you came home early at dishes and then you ran me a bath and we just went to bed and you were fine with it and everybody was happy. It's they're they're expecting it from me. I, I mean, there's a lot of expectations that get built up. And, you know, one of my other little sayings, and I've heard enough of them probably, but is, you know, expectation is just preemptive disappointment. If you go into something with an expectation, if you go in saying, I'm going to do this for this reason, because that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a true expectation, you may be disappointed and you may take that out on your partner and they're like, I don't even know why you're mad. Like right. I never made it, like I didn't say tonight we're having sex because there are couples that schedule their sex and sometimes you have to, sometimes that works and If you're a couple that says, we just can't get it together, Tuesday night, sex night, and you do that and that's fine. I mean, I know a lot of couples that works well for because they're A-type people. They love a schedule. It's built in. They know we're doing nothing else. and We're all creatures of habit. Creatures of habit. And they go, oh, it's too. And if you do that enough, it does become a habit too. If you're out of the habit of having sex, if you're in a couple and you want to bring that back, you say, okay, we're having sex on this night. Get in the mood. Let's go. What's it take? We got a massage. We need a drink. We need some, what you need to get you in the mood because we said we were going to have sex on this night and we do it. And you go, oh, fine. And you do it. And then the fake it till you make it really works when you're not in the mood for sex. You may not be in the mood and you may not want to disappoint your partner because it is sex night. And if you're absolutely not like something has happened and you're, at, if you have a good partner, you can explain that to them and you can rain check them. The problem is when you rain check over and over and over, then it leads to some of the contentment, some of the disappointment, some of the the fail, like I, I give up. And then you're going to be like, well, why don't you ever try to have sex with me anymore? Well, because you reject me every time I try to have sex with you. And I'm doing it the way you told me to. Yeah. I am I am setting the scene. I am letting you know, hey, tonight we're going to get it. Like there's flirty text happening starting. Hey, remember, it's Tuesday. Winky face, eggplant, water splash, whatever the emojis are. And you're like, Ugh. you may roll your eyes at that point because you're like, oh, my God, it's been such a long day. But this is important. And I'm going to do it. And if you go into it, let's say faking it. 
You're not in the mood, but you're going to fake it. You're going to make the noises. You're going to get involved. You're going to do the things. It's going to turn your partner on, which in turn will probably actually turn you on. You will probably get into it a little more. She's like, oh, wait, this, hold on. This actually does feel good. Like, I forgot. This feels good. Like, why haven't we been doing this more? Gosh, this, this actually is pleasurable. But when it becomes a chore, when it becomes part of this is all my partner wants from me. If we're not having sex, it gets held against me. Or it's a, well, I did this, so you need to put out situation. Yeah, no, that's not attractive. Nobody wants that. Right. Like nobody wants to, to feel like the only thing their partner wants from them is to have sex. You're not spending time with me. You're not watching TV with me. You're not talking to me all day. And then we get home and you get a little randy and you all about me. Like, no. Right. It gives, it's icky. Nobody wants that. I mean, there's times when you want to be, uh, oh, what is the word? Where it's like you're just the image and like you're being catcalled kind of situation. Oh, my brain. <laughs> what is the word I'm going for? Uh, anyway, there's someone out there that's thinking of the word I need. <laughs> uh, where you're just seen as like a piece of meat. Yeah. We don't want to always be something like about from our partner. Like you want to be romanticized. You want to be the partner. But sometimes you want to look at you and be like, hey, baby, how you doing? Like, you looking good. Like, it makes you feel good. But you don't always want to be seen that way. And I think it goes back to the physical touch situation of if you are only touching your partner to have sex and your partner is not okay with that because maybe they are. Maybe they don't want to be touched any other time. They're just like, hey, high five, let's keep it moving. Knuckle bump, let's go champ, whatever. If that could be your situation. But most people want to have some sort of intimate physical connection before they're having sex. Of course, there's the one-offs where you're just like, hey, want to go get in there real quick? I'm like, yeah, let's go. For the most part, if it's couples, relationships, those types of things, there's probably some foreplay that needs to be involved. There's probably some interactions. If you're only touching them and doing the foreplay or giving the massage with the expectation of sex, then your partner's going to be like, I don't even want the massage. They're on to you. They're on to you. Gotcha. They've figured out the pattern. And again, it goes for both sexes. There's women out there that have sex drives like men. I hate to even you know, put that as a gender specific thing, but men- But testosterone is naturally more in men and sure. that often drives the sex drive. It does. And hormones play such a, a huge role in women's sex drives. A lot of times men don't understand that when, you know, your hormones are off, just like when a man's testosterone is low. You know, I know so many men in their late 30s, early 40s that I've talked to and I'm like, go get your testosterone checked. Because they're like, I just don't, like, I don't have the urge. or I'm not. It could be depression. It could be testosterone. It could be thyroid. There's a lot of things that can happen at any age. You don't have to be over 50 or over 40 or whatever to have low testosterone. They go and they get it checked and they're like, oh, that's what it was. Like, I have energy now. Not only do I have my sex drive back, which my partner's very happy about, I'm also sleeping better. I also have more energy. I don't feel so drained. I have better focus. When you feel that shift or your partner says, why don't you ever want to have sex anymore? And they're like, I, don't, I just don't want to. And that's not normal. Like maybe they had no sex drive ever. Maybe they have a super high sex drive and then all of a sudden they don't want to anymore. And you're like, do you not want me? Are they cheating on me? Like what's happening? Like, I don't know what's going on. Why don't you want me anymore? Are you not attracted to me? And they're like, no, I just don't. I don't want to. Right. Like most likely that's a medical condition that should probably be checked out. But then you have your partner has the expectation of you wanting to have sex with them and then you don't. And so they, they may feel rejected. They may feel like you don't want them anymore. So they don't try. So you get in this pattern where no one is trying to initiate because of the rejection. And then everyone's upset because they're not having sex anymore. <laughs> it's like, well, you don't try. Well, you don't try either. It's like, oh, I guess not. Like nobody's trying anymore. And it happens in a lot of couples, especially when you kind of get in this conflict. If it is, maybe that has become an issue and their communication has broke down and you're not spending a lot of time together. And then 
you know, the partner comes through and just gives you a little gropey grope or you are tired. Everybody's tired. You don't go to bed any earlier and you get in bed and your partner rolls over and like tries to start pulling. And you're like, bro, I got to get up. What are you doing, lady? Like, leave me alone. I'm not a piece of meat. Stop it. And you're just like, why would you wait until now? Like, there's been no buildup. There's been no conversations. We have barely talked all night. And now you want to be intimate? Probably not. So when you have those breakdowns, it's when you have to build up. And and it may be, listen, we haven't had sex in months. We are scheduling a sex night and we're doing it. Be ready. You may force yourselves into it. But once you get into it, if you still have a connection, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I forgot. We enjoyed this. Why aren't we doing this? Okay, next week we're doing the same thing. And you may keep it on a schedule for a while. And then it does become more spontaneous than we do. Sex is super important in relationships. Like I said, unless you're in one where it's not, which blows my mind. I can't even. I've been in one where the person did not want to have sex. And I'm just like, why don't you want to have sex? <laughs> like We're in a relationship. We're sleeping in the same bed. We're doing all the things. No desire. He had no desire. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Welcome, Rumi. Was it medical or do you know, I guess? He just had no, like, I don't think he had a sex drive. Never in the relationship was it like hot and heavy. It was just, all right, bud. Like every now and then we had, and then I'm like, what are we? Like, we're just, we're literally roommates. It was a point where we're literally, and at least he cooked. Like he loved to cook. So cool. At least you cook. But there was no, and I'm just like, why are you not, why are you sleeping in my bed? Like, what are we doing here? It was just crazy because I'm like, what is happening? Why are we in this relationship, if you will? And you don't want to put out, put out, bro. Like, come on. And so it can be really fresh because it, you know, there was a, a time in that relationship. Where I'm like, well, what is it about me? Why are you not attracted to me? What am I not doing? He just had no sex drive. According to all the blood work, everything was fine. And he was on some medications that's known to decrease sex drive, but he also just didn't want to. Like, I really think he just didn't want to. It wasn't that. It was, it was just not an important thing to him. It is to me one of the many reasons that relationship did not work out. He did cook a lot, which was nice because I don't. So that was a good a, a good bonus. Although you can, there there many people may not know a lot of things about you. I don't know that you've actually done any true opening up about yourself in this podcast quite mm. yet quite yet so tell us uh, really. spe- speak, speaking Ew. of cooking <laughs> speaking of cooking you you can you're quite the accomplished chef yourself i i do cook i like to cook i'm good at it when i do it i love to i can make a mean cheesecake um and that buffalo chicken oh, dip buffalo oh, chicken dip that's oh. have it for dinner you gotta mm. have some at our house all the time i know <laughs> but you know it's i don't cook for myself Because it's a waste of food and I don't feed my dog people food. So that it's really a waste of food. I'm in a couple, then I don't mind cooking. Like I like to cook. I do enjoy cooking. Right. But I I mean, if it's just me or if it's a roommate situation, yeah, I'm not cooking. Yeah. Like unless we have an agreement that it's my night. And he enjoyed it. He did it well. So it worked out. (laughs) Listen, I'll put the, I'll clean, I'll throw the dishes in the dishwasher. I'll put them up. I will clean because he was terrible at that. He was a messy little motherfucker. Like my (laughs) God. How many, it, it's like when we talked about the love language when we were talking about doing things for people. He loved to cook. He is one of those people I would look, I would walk in my kitchen and be like, how many pots do you need? That's where that reference came from. Every spoon, <laughs> every spoon, you had to use a different spoon each time. Like, were you just each time getting a new one out of the drawer? Like, what is happening? So yeah, he was super messy, but he cooked. So. How much of the advice do you, that you give on this podcast is actual life advice versus things you've learned professionally? I would say 50-50. I've lived a, a weird, long, short life, I guess. I mean, I'm not a young person. I don't consider myself old. Right. But I've had a lot of experiences. I've done a lot of things. You could comfortably I, say you're halfway. Sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. comfortably over halfway, I'm sure. <laughs> The likelihood of being like 98, 99 in that area is probably We've not realistic. Lives, That's so. right. I'm I'm good. Yeah. Like I've had a lot of experiences. I've had a lot of random jobs. I've had a lot of relationships. Unfortunately, I've had a lot of relationships. It has always been by choice that way, but I would love to have a good solid relationship. Top five jobs. Top, top three if if top five's too much. Top three jobs you've had. Top you, that three. doesn't count the one that you are currently in. I wouldn't count it anyway. No. <laughs> 
Uh, top three. I worked on a small ship cruise line. Okay. That was a lot of fun. I've heard stories about that, and that sounds like fun. It was a lot of fun. It was kind of my quarter life crisis. I was I had been managing restaurants, which I actually really enjoyed, but it was it's a really hard life. And I was young. I needed a break, so I quit my job and went to work on a small ship cruise line for a season up in Alaska. It was amazing. Loved it. It was very small. We had like the overnight boat that I worked on had held 50 passengers. And then I also worked on a yacht, a Winsport yacht. I transferred between the two because I didn't take breaks. I just went between the ships. And it was a day cruiser. So we would take like, I think it held like 70 people. We would cruise to the next port, unload them. And then the crew would get to go have, I mean, there was only like 10 of us, but we would get to go have a blast in town or do whatever and then load everybody back up in the morning. So that was, that would probably be number one best impulse job. Okay. (laughs) And then I worked at SeaWorld in San Antonio in the aquariums. So I was the little diver that's in there feeding the fish and talking to the people. Uh, But with that job, you're basically an underwater janitor. Like you spend more time cleaning the tanks than you do getting to enjoy the shows because you come in very early. Which congratulations, by the way, 20 years of service for Patty. 20 years as a Patty scuba instructor this year. So it doesn't even seem like it should be that I've been doing it long enough for it to be 20 years, but that goes back to the I'm older, but I don't feel older. Right. I don't feel my age, which I don't even know what that means. Like, I'm not sure that that's a thing anymore. Yeah. I'm going to go 40s is the new 20s. There you go. (laughs) That means I started diving at two. No. (laughs) Your dad did it a lot. That's true. That's true. I was just an infant out there. Um. So, yes, I, I did that. That was a lot of fun. But, yeah, in the morning, I mean, you we started work super early and you jumped in the tanks with – because the big reef tank is painted concrete. So you went in with pressure washers. Like you were attached at the top. You just wore like a rag or you would have a, a rag set down. And so they drain it? No. Nope. No. So you're, no. Pressure washing you're pressure washing in the water. In the water with your dive gear on. That sounds weird. It is weird. <laughs> And you're just out there pressure watching, like, trying not to spray the fish. And the uh, rays would come over because they like to can opener you. So they would come over and he- catch the top of your head with their bottom jaw and, like, can open your head. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Especially when you had the feed, like, with you, they would get you. If you didn't feed them fast enough, they would whack your head every time. They're just jerks. So, yeah, I did that. And so we cleaned the coral reef. And it was pressure washing like scrubbing, squeegeeing the windows to get the algae off. And then you put in um, like there were these little container things of food. And then we would have these little weighted things that you would stick lettuce heads on and put down there in the corners. So the fish would eat uh, the little lettuce heads. And then you went into the shark tank with basically a vacuum cleaner and no fins, straight weights Like harness BC tank, like no inflators. Oh my God. I thinking about that gives me, still makes me twitchy. Yeah. Like I, and at the San Antonio SeaWorld, the shark tank has an angled like decking, whatever you want to call it, where you would get out of the pool area. It's angled. You went in through where they did like the medication and stuff because they would bring the sharks to the top to like give them meds or do anything like that. You had to climb in. So you went in again, you didn't have fins on. You just had a harness weights and the, you know, regular regulator and everything. And you unlocked this gate, went down, whoever was last locked the gate back. So the sharks couldn't get up in the gate area and you drop to the bottom with a little vacuum hose and you vacuumed until somebody was out of air. And the fun part is you're down there and like, I mean, we had like a 14 or 15 foot tiger shark in there at the time, like big sharks. And I mean, a house dog will bite you. Like it was so uncomfortable. And you're down there vacuuming these shadows. You're just going, oh, I hated it so much. I've never breathed. And I can make a tank of air last. (laughs) I have never breathed more air at 30 foot than, I mean, because the first one out of air, y'all get out. Yeah. Oh, I'd be sucking some air, like purging my rate. Like I hated it so much, so much. But there was a girl that I worked with who hated being in the eel tank. 
And I love the eels. I mean, I got one on me. I love the eels. And because they would lay on you, like they would come and lay on your shoulders so you could see them breathe. And they'd come out of their holes and look at you while you're in there scrubbing away. And she hated that part. So we would always, like if we got a sign, we're like, nope, you, we're twitching. We good. Nice. Like, I, oh, <laughs> just thinking about being that shark tank makes my stomach hurt. Like I hated it so much. I don't, I don't understand people that enjoy shark dives. It's just weird. I don't mind seeing a shark on a dive. I don't want to go on a shark dive. I'm good. I've had enough of that. Then my third favorite job, it was probably my most entertaining job. I was a bartender, a bartender only at a strip club. Oh, yeah. In San Antonio. It was before I went to work at SeaWorld. And it was probably my most entertaining job. I worked with a couple of guys. We had a lot of fun. You get to know the ladies that work. You get to know the people that come in because I work day shift. And that's a whole different crowd that comes in for lunch. I bet. For day shift. And because you're just back there working away. And like if new music started, you're like, oh, new girl, new girl, what's happening? So that was probably one of the most entertaining jobs I've ever had. But yeah, I've had a lot of random, random jobs. Worst job. Worst job. Not this one. No. <laughs> Selling pump and sewage pump, like small pump sewage pumps for like fountains. And then they yeah. did bigger like things. I was a salesperson for that in Oklahoma when I lived in Oklahoma City. Dang. Yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> How long did you do that? Oh, not long. Oh, okay. I well, Longer than you wanted to, but. <laughs> yeah. Seven, eight months probably. Okay. It wasn't, I mean, I did like, I got into, I did international accounts and a lot of the sales stuff was done through email and online. So you didn't have to do a, like, you weren't like cold calling selling because right. I would have lasted two weeks at that. I am not a salesperson. It was, it was probably the worst job though. It was pretty terrible. Tell us about your t-shirt. Uh, today I have on Born and Raised. I decided I'm going to do... Right now until I run out, which should be a while. Uh, band shirts. I'm a pretty casual person. So I decided band concert t-shirts because we go to a lot of band concerts. But then I realized, because this was from Born and Raised a couple years ago, which is a country fest in Pryor, Oklahoma. And I realized that almost all of my concert shirts are country concerts because a lot of the, or like rock bands. So Foo Fighters or some of those. Because a lot of the other concerts, like when we went and saw Wiz Khalifa, when we've when I've seen Snoop, when I've seen some, they don't really have merch. Yeah, you're right. It's just not as readily available. It's because sure. I was going through the shirts and I'm like, where's my other yeah. shirts? But then I'm like, they don't, they didn't really have shirts. You're right. I think about it. when we went to Wiz Khalifa, there was not. I don't remember a, a any kind of Mm-mm. booth that had any merch. Nothing. Whatsoever. I mean, I think you could have brought some weed off somebody. Oh, definitely. There was plenty of that in the air. <laughs> but, like, I mean, because I've been to, to Snoop. We went to the one. I've seen Snoop a couple times. No merch anywhere. Hmm. And just some other, like, rap concerts and, you know, festivals like that that I've gone to. They don't really have merch. I wonder if once you get to that level, if you, you, care. If you maybe you're offering it on the website already. And people are, you know, because it may it may become a cost effective thing not to even bring merch with you on that. But if you're coming up, you want people to have your stuff so they can That's talk true. about you. So there's a level of, you know, exposure. yeah. I think if you're in the in between, like if yeah. you're smaller or you're super big, you have merch. But if you're just kind of touring around, do maybe that's it. I mean, if I think about like Foo Fighters, they had a good one, but they always play big, huge events. And I think a lot of them are going to online because Taylor Swift. We bought a shirt there, but we also ended up going online because you had a, there was like a QR code you can scan. And I think you can probably find the website now, but at the concert, there was a QR code you could scan that took you to a website where you could buy everything that they had at the merch stand Hmm. without standing in the three hour line. That's smart. Which we paid some girls to pretend like we were their mothers to jump the line. So that's hilarious. We're like, Hey girls. We're going to give you enough money to buy yourself a shirt if you'll let us jump in line. And they're like, oh, hey, mom. So I love it. (laughs) We jumped in line. We did not wait the two hours for Tay Tay, (laughs) was she worth it? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, it was amazing. So every video you see is exactly what you see. Uh, I mean, in person, it was just, it was an event. It was amazing. Top three concerts. Oh, I mean, Taylor Swift is there, I have to say. Madonna. 
saw her years ago. Really? That was one of my... During one album. It was... What album was that? It was the one that she came out with back in... Gosh, it would have been seven, eight years ago. My brain doesn't work that well. Okay, the uh, music album. Yes, was it music? Yes, it was music. But she played a lot of her other... But, I mean, I love Madonna. Madonna is what Taylor Swift is now to this generation and stuff. That's a good point. Which I love Taylor Swift too, but Madonna was my Taylor Swift. And I grew up with her. It was all of her music through our high school girl. You know, she was the icon, the female icon ray of light. for me. Ray of light. That's it. That was it. Yeah. We went and saw her and drove to Houston and she was almost two hours late coming to the stage. Oh, dang. And we sat there because we were like, listen. I paid a grip for these tickets. And this was like eight, nine years ago. However long, 10 years. How long have you been around? 12 years? Yeah, 14. So it was 13, 14 years ago. Before that. Wow. Because right? it was pre you. Yeah. So it was 15 years ago, yeah. even. I have wow. no concept of time. I know, me neither. That was a long time ago. Timelines are horrible. Don't ask me when horrible. something happened. I, I, I saw a meme not that long ago that said, when I say the other day, it, anywhere from birth to today. And that's, <laughs> that is me. <laughs> that's right. Like 15 years ago was when we sent, but. You know, it, tickets have gotten more expensive over the but back then it was a lot of money for a concert ticket. And a little bit can be a few hours, and a little while can be a few days. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we waited a little while, is what there it felt go. like. <laughs> but she came on and put on an amazing show. It was pre all of her plastic surgery, too. So yeah. she still looked like Madonna. She, I mean, she was probably still 50 then, right? I think she's in her 60s now, but she was, I, I mean, I, it was it was so worth it. Like it was amazing. I that was very much up there because I've always wanted to see her. And then my other concerts, and I'm lumping twenty plus years of concert going is Jimmy Buffett. Oh dang! Okay, because I started going to Jimmy Buffett concerts in like ninety eight, ninety seven, ninety eight, and he used to play Dallas every year. It's like twenty five years. So <laughs> quit doing the math. Damn it, bro. So, yeah, 25 years. So for probably 10 years straight, we saw him in Dallas every year. Would go. And it's if you've never been to a Jimmy Buffett concert, which now he's he's had some sickness and he's not touring as big. It is an event. Oh, yeah. The parking lot parties, the dressing up. Like, it's not even a parking lot party. It's like that's its own thing. I got to go to... At FC Dallas, and yeah. then one at the other. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, it was at the Dos Equis. Yeah. The so one you I've went to, yeah. The three. Yeah, yeah, it's so much fun. So they, I mean, any Jimmy Buffett concert is up there. Oh, they're me. outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very much fun. You get to dress up. You get to so be on an island. For, be on an island. Literally. Yes. And surrounded with sharks. And, people yeah. in shark costumes anyway. Absolutely. Um, I actually went to the Millennial concert, or Y2K concert out in california wow at the i think it was the verizon center i can't remember what it was called then but yeah it was and that was so cool like it was it was pricey but it was new year's eve y2k they had performer like it was actual performers it wasn't just people in the parking lot performing right. it was actual performers and like hors d'oeuvres and drinks and it was it was super cool so yeah that but I would lump all of him together. I'll be surprised. I, I am surprised. I would have said you would have thrown a Foo Fighters in there because you are a big fan <sighs> of the Foo Fighters. That's true. I mean, it's hard to pick, right? Yeah, it is. I did say top three. Yeah. You, you <laughs> narrowed me down. Yes, yes. I put you in a... You put me in a box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Foo Fighters is awesome. I did get to see them three times uh, when... Taylor Hawkins. Taylor. Yes. So a couple times... Or three times when he was alive. I have not seen him, seen them since Taylor's passing. But it was, I mean, they put on an amazing show. Metallica puts on an amazing show. I saw them during the Reload tour. And that was awesome. They sound just like they do. And I love a concert where they sound just like they do on the album. You're not like, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> Juvenile in concert. Terrible. I love you, Juve. Like, terrible. I loved uh, 50 Cent wasn't great in concert no. when I first saw him. And that was during the very first Into Club in 98. Right. And then um, what else? 
But Petey Pablo was Petey great. Petey Pablo was great. Great. Petey was amazing. I loved it. Yeah. Even though he stopped mid-concert to go take an insulin shot. <laughs> but hey, hey got to take care of your health. Age is getting to us all. <laughs> I love it. What are you doing when you just got some downtime? We know you, you've talked about watching TV a lot I of watch times. TV what's, a lot. I know you're a fan of the America's favorite pastime. What, what's something, what are the things you like to do? Hobbies, whatever you want to call them. I, so I Xbox as well, but I guess that's in front of the TV. <laughs> Almost everything I do is in front of the, no. No screens. No, no. screens. <laughs> Without screens, I yeah. do nothing. That's I, funny. I like to be in the water. I like to be outside. Um, you know, I've, I Hiking, love to. Hiking, biking. Uh, not really hiking, biking, but I'll go sit. I'll go sit by a fire. Nice. Okay. I'll camping. go sit by camping. Okay. I could do some camping. Gotcha. I'll, I'll Swimming. I'll sit by a fire and swim, gotcha. hang out, backyard it up. I do enjoy being outside when it's not a gajillion degrees like it is right now because it's just stupid hot. Super true. So bad. That I mean, I love to be in the water. If I can be in the water, I'm happy. Love to be on a boat. Don't have one yet. I'm working on that. It's gonna when I win the lottery tonight. You have access to like three boats. But I do. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I want you. my own. Exactly. Uh, I'm gonna win the lottery tonight. So this is we're recording on the Tuesday. Oh, is that tomorrow? Yeah. I'm gonna be a gajillionaire. However, however much it's worth, I'll keep I'll keep podcasting though. No, I probably wouldn't. I'll buy my own network. I'll franchise myself. It's fine. I'll be syndicated. By Thursday, I'll yeah, be syndicated. Hear me everywhere. By the time this releases next week, I'll be syndicated. If I win the lottery tomorrow, That's funny. <laughs> I'll syndicate myself. Yeah, I mean, I like to spend time with family. You guys go out, hang out, friends. I don't get to see my friends as much, though, now that I moved back to rural America. I'm really pretty chill. You like to travel? I like to travel. I love to travel. Yeah. Where's the top three places traveled? Ooh. That's tricky. So one of my top places is Cosmel. I love Cosmel. It's because of the diving, probably the diving. Yeah. It's you know a safe island, as safe as you can get. I guess I'm not really a lay around the pool and just chill out all day. But you know, in Cosmel, you can go shop. You can drive around the island. You go to the backside. We were there one year when the turtles were hatching, and we got to go watch that and, like, help dig them out and do all of that. It was so cool. And you can't beat the diving. I mean, in this hemisphere, you can't beat the diving. I love Cosmel. It's always, always up there. I like to ski. Somewhere I could go skiing. I don't really have a a favorite in that. We went to that one in Kansas City. It was, like, north of Kansas City. (laughs) I was like, there's a a ski slope in Kansas City? (laughs) There's two little ski slopes. It was a lot of fun, though. It was. Um, so that was a good time. So I like to go ski. So I would say somewhere that I could, could ski. And then I think one of my other favorite places that I've ever been was Antigua. And I went to a sandals there and it was, you know, cause they're so all inclusive. You yeah. had just everything and went up to the sugar canes and all of that stuff. So no, that I, was a lot of fun. I think of pirates when I hear Antigua. There's, Me too. Okay. Like I think but that's nothing, why I liked it. No pirates. <laughs> there were no pirates. Oh, Not that I saw. <laughs> That was a lot of fun, though. But I enjoy it, you know, and it's luckily I do have good family that likes to travel because if not, I would be traveling alone, which would suck. You luckily, know? you get along with your brother-in-law. That's true. He's I right. Yeah, I put up with him. No. <laughs> I think he tolerates more me more than I tolerate no, him no, over no. there. But um, I've, suckered him, I've pretty... suckered him into a podcast. So yeah, here yeah. we are. Uh, I, I, I suckered her into letting me be a part of her podcast. So oh, here we are. Whatever. <laughs> He has the popular hosting Hocha Town, also regrettable. And uh, McCurtain Food Review. McCurtain Food Review. And then Hocha Talk is also, the, we're going to try to branch all those off yeah. pretty soon. So. so you're growing, you won't have time for me. Oh, no. No, you fine. are prime. You are <laughs> primary A1 because the wife said so. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think I, I've told you this and I don't mind saying it. I think your podcast probably has one of the biggest potentials of all the podcasts I have a I'm a part of just because of the knowledge you're dropping on people that they would normally spend $250 an hour to get. Yeah. Does that make sense? Sure. You know, so, and like you've, uh, you've talked about the, the apps and different things and those sound good and everything, but people that are already listening to podcasts that have brought the, in many cases, unless it's a friend or family member that you've told about it, they probably happened to pop across your podcast because they searched a keyword that you have in it. And then that's why they're still here. You know what I mean? So I think I, th- I really do. I think that you're offering something, and you you do it very you 
you know, and again, she's my sister in law, so I'm not I'm not boosting <laughs> her ego here, people. I'm just telling her how it is. But uh no, she she's got something special here. So I, I I'm glad and proud to be a part of it. Thank you well, so much. Well, I'm glad that you help with it because this is not my forte for sure. I can talk all day. Yes. But this which I, part <laughs> Which I found out I, I didn't I don't think I realized prior to your first monologue where you just <laughs> went in, I was like, Okay, oh, that she's got this. She has it. I was like, Okay, you you've got not a, hey. You put one of these, a microphone, in front of some people, and they clam up. They just, True. Like, Here's the, where the hell's going? <laughs> yeah, you know. It's like, they, into the mic. Exactly. Speak past the mic, please. No. <laughs> I hear you on the morning show. It'd be like, a little closer. Yeah. Get a little closer yeah, there. Yeah, 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 exactly. But no. So I think I think uh, you're on to something. You're doing something big time here, and I hope that uh, many people get to you know, benefit from the knowledge you're dropping on them. Me too. And I realize, again, you mentioned 50-50, life. Yeah. And and uh, and application or, or life and uh, learnings, but you know, no matter where it comes from, you're presenting it with that. I would say a fifty-fifty style as well. You're you've got you can tell the knowledge is there, but you present it like just a, my homegirl I'm talking to, you right. know, my yeah. sister, you know, the, sure. this 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 lady I may be talking in the cafe, you know, or whatever. So I think the delivery is is on point as well. And I think that was the goal. I mean, you know, when we sat down and talked about it, my goal was to make, I mean, that's why in all of the things, it's like, we're going to talk about mental health shit. That's who I am when I talk about it. And I want it to be accessible to everyone. And approachable as well. Approachable. Yeah, yeah. I, and I've listened to a lot of mental health products and they're very clinical and dry and no one, I, I mean, I guess someone's benefiting from that. I mean, they have a lot of listeners. It's just not my style. Right. And I think it does benefit. There's a lot of things I haven't lived through, but I've been around people that have, or I, I've helped someone that has enough that I learned and, and asked them the questions, you know, what would you want to tell people? What do you want people to know? And I've actually had people say, that's really weird to you in the podcast. Like, I can't believe that because you don't talk that much. Because I really don't talk that much. I'm not a super big talker. I hate small talk. I am not really a chatty person unless I've been drinking and then I get chatty. Like, that's when you know. Yeah. Like, the, the more I drink, the chattier I get. When I'm teaching or training or doing, you know, something that can be helpful, it does come natural. Like, it just flows. Yep. Because it is it is something that I do think is important. And when I left my job to go work on the cruise ship, I was in a pretty serious depression. I didn't even know that. I did not even recognize that. I had been working my ass off in the restaurants. I had been neglecting relationships. I'd been doing all these other things. And when I finally stopped and kind of looked back at life, because I, I just really worked through it and went on the boat. And I think it was a natural thing. I had this time away from everything to kind of regroup, figure out what I wanted to do, what my next steps were, get out there in the world. Now I look back and, and it wasn't long after I kind of started, you know, back in the real world, because that's when I came back, when I got back from work on the cruise ships is when I started teaching scuba, because I was right. like, I love this. I want to do this. I, you know, I'm not going to get rich off this, but I love it. And it makes me happy. And I want to do something that makes me happy. I can look back and know now that was depression. I was very depressed. I had put on a lot of weight. I hated life. I hated everything. I wanted to run away. I literally ran away. <laughs> I packed my bar. I literally ran away. And I didn't even really understand mental health issues. I didn't understand that part of it, even though I did have a degree in psychology that you don't really learn. Like you learn about the things, but you don't learn about the symptoms. You don't learn about what to look for. You don't learn about what it looks like to you or how to recognize it in yourself. So I didn't really recognize it at the time. But now I'm like, wow, I was really kind of depressed. I feel like if I had someone the way I'm trying to put this out there where a normal person can listen to it and go, oh, I kind of do that. That's not a healthy behavior. Exactly. That brings me comfort, though. I, I uh, Can I make a, a uh, admission? I've done that multiple times when you're like, <laughs> well, if he's doing that, then he's probably blah, blah. I'm like, dang it. I, I'm busted. Okay. <laughs> the women know. Dang it. No. <laughs> I've been found out. Yes. <laughs> or it's like, oh, that's not that's not a healthy way to do that. And that's true too. Uh, you know, just again, different things, I guess you see yourself maybe like you said, you saw your parents do it and it was yeah. it was okay, you know, no big deal. And even not even like the bad stuff. Sure. Just just the normal regular stuff, you're like, 
Well, that isn't, I mean, that isn't normal. Right. You know what I mean? That it's, is a terrible coping yeah, skill. absolutely. Like, how did they come up with that? Exactly. And I think it's one of those things that the way people are raised is normal. And how you see people deal with things, how people adapt to things, it's normal. And then when you get older and you hear something or you see something, or you start reading, you're, you're just like, I don't really like the way this feels anymore. And you, and you go, oh, that's not normal. Right. I thought that's how we handle things. People don't just leave when they're mad. Like that's. I did that. That was one thing I did with <laughs> Laura and I early uh-huh. on, as I just left, and and she got it. She sure. understood, and we were a little more mature than when we got into our relationship. So we kind of got each other. But I did, that I was used to that. I would just leave the the location. I wasn't going off to the bar to drink or whatever. Right. But but I left. But then I don't remember after two or three times doing that, we. Com- communicated about why I did that and then all of a sudden I realized well I don't have to do that right you know I could leave I can walk into the other room for a few minutes if I'm really upset because my dad he got upset sure. and he and if it came to him it was a bad deal you know what I'm saying right if if my brother and I and my mom didn't handle it amongst the three of us <laughs> then dad handled it you know right. and that, that usually meant sure. a whooping Right. I mean, and as a young kid, that was a big deal. So, right. Yeah. So, when dad's involved, it's like, oh. Yeah. So I, I think I, I embodied that role uh-huh. for quite a while, but I, I think luckily I was able to gradually grow out of it as well. So, and you know how they say the first children get the worst of it. The last children get the best of it. Oh, but yeah. Jackson, he's just living the dream right now. <laughs> he really is. Although if you ask him, he does everything around the house. Well, of course he does. <laughs> I mean, call. Right. But, but I think that's true. You know, kids have very different parents. And I and I think it's important. I mean, that's a great point because it's not like you were a, a bad parent or this parent. Like you or were even just abusive. a yeah. different parent yeah. because you did what you knew at the time. And then you change and you realize what's actually important and what really needs to be disciplined and what can be just let go. Well, let me clarify. There is a level of dis- of abuse in la- be- yelling. In sure. a household. So I, I guess even me, I would try to say, oh, it's not abuse. Well, you know, hollering in a moment because you're angry, there's a, there's a level of abuse that comes of to Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. And you learn those things. Yep. And it, it, and it's the same when you have, you get families where they're like, well, you should be a part of it. You have to be. No, like, because people have very different relationships with their parents, even if they're only a year or two apart. But when you get further than that, you have very different parents. You know, one of my my dear friends, she became mother to her siblings, but her siblings still remember like these good times with the parents because the oldest protected. So they did get to have good times with some of the parents. Right. She didn't. Gotcha. She took the abuse. She took the things. She raised them. You know, their good times came really from her, but they remember it from the other parents. And so it's, you know, it's one of those things where everyone gets to have their own relationship with whoever's in that. And you don't get to tell them they should. Right. Blood does not make you family. I don't care if they're your parent, your sibling, your aunt, your uncle, your brother, cousin. I don't care. If they are toxic to you, they are toxic to you. And they may not have been because they may have grown up. They may have had the other kids. They may have been in addiction when they had you and they're clean now. Right. So. Like they were very different, but you don't get to tell that other sibling that lived through the addiction that mom and dad are great or mom is great or dad is great That's a good point. because they weren't to them. They didn't get the parent you got. And if they say, I can't be involved with that person because of how they raised me, that needs to be respected. They need to have that separation. I think your listeners deserve one of these Uh-oh. every about 10 podcasts okay. so we can delve more deep deeper into your ill into you ill into the Leslie Ross icky but um one last thing okay. before we go favorite snack sweet or sa- so i it okay. depends okay. on what you i'm can, in it. i okay. get too yeah you're good yeah uh, okay. sweet and savory yeah so or, if i'm really craving i will make the buffalo chicken dip cuz it's one of my favorite things we've talked about it twice now you have to make it for it's us. okay i'll make so <laughs> i got the stuff i always have supplies to make buffalo chicken dip at my house cuz i have it for supper on occasion which by the way this is not a paid advertisement it is not but sonic is currently making a buffalo chicken dip little uh they are pretty good i was like okay the little wontons yes. they're like little wontons yes. i buffalo don't know what they're chicken dip called. wontons literally what they, <laughs> they are they are so good they're very tasty i had them the other day they're pretty good. they're not as good as mine that's true no now, but I don't put mine in a wonton either. Yeah. So maybe I need to throw it in a wonton. Let's air fry yours in some wontons. <gasps> Let's, oh, my God. Done. Done. 
Otherwise, gosh, sweetness, probably anything chocolate. I enjoy <laughs> dark chocolate. I enjoy caramel. If it's got caramel in it, I'm bet. Normally, I would say that's such a Miss America answer, but you know what I'm going to say? That's such a Barbie answer. It is a Barbie answer. I could be Barbie. It's fine. That's true. <laughs> or cinnamon candies. Love cinnamon candies. Okay. Okay. Cinnamon, cinnamon, alcohol, cinnamon alcohols? Uh, I mean, yeah, you know. Okay. I grew up with the aftershock. With yeah. the, uh, no, it wasn't even aftershock. Yeah, it was aftershock then. Rumble mints? Because, <laughs> that no, cinnamon? that's peppermint. Oh, that's peppermint. Yes, right. That tastes like licorice, right? Yeah. Or, no, that's Jaeger. Jaeger Jaeger's like horrible. <laughs> Rumble mints, mints was good. It went and back. 101 proof, I think. I think so. Too. Yeah. <laughs> we had aftershock. Now they have fireball, but yes. it was aftershock in my day. But I'll take cinnamon. I love cinnamon. Like cinnamon um, Bass Pro, again, not a paid advertisement. <laughs> Has like the tw- I haven't been able to find them, so I don't know if they make them anymore. But they're like Twizzlers, like like cinnamon licorice. Right. Oh, one of my favorite things. But if you love this podcast and you'd love to advertise on Listen, it, Leslie is ready to chat. I'm open. Yes, email her. <laughs> I will, What's I that will email cash again? those checks. Hey at heytherapist.com. Help at heytherapist.com. You can go to the website and submit a form. And I I wish people would do that too, because like your questions and the things that have come up, like. I would love to answer people's questions or, you know, send me your scenarios and I'll help, you know, as much information as you can put in there and let's walk through it. Like, let's figure out a a good response. So there is a form on the website, which is hey-therapist.com or heytherapist.com. They both go to the same place because I bought both. Uh, And then help at heytherapist or hey at heytherapist also gets you there. And so just, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, Like, subscribe. We're now on YouTube. The videos, they're getting some views, not a lot. Except my camera kicked off, so y'all get, during this part, you get the logo. Happy. Uh, Says my card's full. We're going to get this camera situation figured out, I swear. We get you a terabyte card or something. (sighs) I think it's because I didn't delete y'all off there. Probably. Because you had yours in the front. I didn't format it before we started. Oh. So, next time, we're learning. It's progress. That's it. That's all I got. For my producer, Jay Lindley, I'm Leslie Ross. Thank you all for joining us. Please send any questions or comments through the website, heytherapist.com, or email help at heytherapist.com. They may be featured on the show anonymously. Hey Therapist is an SEOK radio production and is for your entertainment purposes only. Thank you for joining us. Make good choices. (laughs) 